have James Madison here. He is an artist with Tulalip Tribes, and I can't wait to hear what he has to say about what he does. James, it's all you. All right. Well, thanks, Jenny. Um, for those that you guys don't know that Jenny and I went to high school together and, um, you know, I just want to say thank you for reaching out to me and thank thank all of you for allowing me to come here and speak about what I do for a living and what I get to do every day of my life. Um, <clears throat> it's very important to me to be able to do things like this, um, to bring my culture to folks like yourself. And uh, I thank all of you for taking the time to um, hear about my culture and and hear about what I do. Um, everything that I do has been passed down to me uh, from my grandfather and my father. Um, so it's a lot of stories, a lot of history. Um, you know, my people have, um, you know, Talalip is a lot of different families from um, anywhere from Snoqualmie, Skykomish, um, Snohomish, you know, all through Arlington, Marysville, Stanwood, Mukoteo, down to Seattle, even up into Canada. So we have um, a lot of blood that goes into a lot of different areas. So, and a lot of people don't know that. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to try to show you my screen and we'll see what happens here. So we'll see. You need to hit the hey, share what? screen down there, the green button. Yeah, I've hit that. Of course, it doesn't want to operate when you want it to. <clears throat> but for you, those that don't know, I have a couple sculptures actually in Arlington um, that's on the Centennial Trail. And um, Sarah Arney, actually, uh, we were on a, a board together um, and uh, she got me um, involved. And um, anyways, uh, you know, I appreciate her. Um, I don't know if any of you know her, but uh, she's really uh, into the arts and she's, you know, she's a, she's a great human being. So, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. Well, regardless, I don't know if I can do it this way. So, sorry, but I'm going to uh, try to do the reverse roll here with my phone. Um, There we go. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting on with my phone right now. So, sorry, I'm trying to. I think I figured it out. Hey, you're there. Is it working? 
Yeah. <laughs> I see myself. No, it's actually working. Okay, I'm going to get off my phone. Maybe I shouldn't do anything. I'll leave it alone. Okay. So this piece here um, is at Kayak Beach. And those are my two little boys there. That's Jaden and Jevin. They are 15 and 13 now. Um, and speaking of football, my oldest is uh, playing football. He's a freshman at Archbishop Murphy, of all places. Um, this is, uh, I call it a salmon ladder. Um, and this is just to pay the respects to the, the salmon that gives us, uh, you know, life and allows us to eat and feed off of the waters. Um, my tribe is, you know, we call ourselves the salmon people. Getting real fun here. Next picture. So this piece is in the Providence Hospital. Um, in the middle, there's three orca whales and around is uh, some waves and there's four little faces that represent the four directions. This is so different, oh my gosh. <laughs> so, sorry, I am clicking on pictures and they're different pictures that are showing up to you guys. So right now, are you seeing a window? Yes. Okay, on my computer, it's something totally different. Okay, so this is um, a window I did for the fire department up at Oso. And this is to uh, pay respects to the people that lost their lives and their animals up there at Oso. And um, what I did is basically depict the old, um, landscape of what it used to look like before the landslide and i just want to kind of take a still life of of what it used to look like um i i got to talk to some folks that actually lost some limbs and lost a wife um, lost dog and one of their dogs lost a leg and um you know, it was very humbling to talk to them and speak to them and, you know, and hear their story. So it was pretty important for me to um, create something, you know, bright and vibrant and, um, and just kind of give them something to um, remember what it used to look like, I guess, if you will. So, let's see. Okay. Now, are you able to see my screen still? Yep. Okay. And is there a metal object? Still the also a uh, window. Is it? Okay. So I have a totally different picture on mine. <laughs> okay. Now we have what looks like a squid or okay. an octopus. Yes. Um, so, okay, there we go. So this is uh, an octopus pole that I did for the Tillip Tribes administration. And 
um, what I wanted to do is kind of create um, something that was kind of realistic in a way, because um, that was our old way of carving in this area. And what it depicts is a, a human being uh, going to get his water power. So we used to take a big giant rock and uh, paddle out in a canoe and we would jump off into the water and that rock would basically be like a weight belt to a scuba diver so it, it would weigh us down and as we were going down into the water um, we would come up you know you would come up with a, a water power of some sort you know, or water um, uh, animal uh, spirit animal and uh, for this person it's the octopus and on, on the right there is a, a rock that he is um, carrying. Um, and that's his uh, spirit rock that um, weighs him down to the bottom of the ocean. Um, we also did it in lakes as well. Man, this is different. This is different. Um, speaking of Huskies, um, this is my Husky. Uh, this is all glass. This is um, this is basically a glass shawl, like a blanket that you put over yourself. Um, and you know, there's old uh, woven shawls. Um, that grandmothers or uh, people in longhouses that would wear, and now they're displayed in frames and you know put up on a on a wall. Well, this is my modern depiction of a glass shawl, and I'm a diehard husky. I believe purple and gold, and so um, I got the opportunity to create this, make this uh, in any color that I wanted to, and nobody was telling me anything. So I decided to make it as purple and gold. And um, so coming down is uh, salmon and uh, along uh, going across is uh, a basket design of water. Um, some of you have been down to uh, Mukilteo and seen this piece here. This piece here is a big giant piece of driftwood um, and I wanted to carve it, you know, make it real old. And uh, that was very challenging for a person like me because I'm more refined person. I like to make things look real, you know, perfect and symmetrical and everything. Whereas this piece, it was, it reminded me of a big hand coming out of the ground. So I call it mother earth. Um, so basically your hand, um, it's the backside of your hand reaching up into the, reaching out of the earth. Um, let's see here. This piece here. I'm assuming that you're looking at the cement wall. Correct. Okay. Sorry, it's different on my screen. So I'm trying to figure out what's what here. So this is uh, this is the noise walls um, off of 116th Street there, and uh, wanted to depict uh, you know our waters and um, the whale is you know our logo of our tribe. Um, you know this is um, basically a shot of the Puget Sound here. Um, and that's Camino Head, um, little island right there. 
and wood bees in the background. And uh, basically, so we're standing at Tulela looking out <clears throat> into the water. When I was a kid, um, you know, down at Kayak, there are these whales that would, orca whales that would always come through all the time before the Navy came. So that's what I remember as a kid. Um, this is all done out of cement. These are all giant molds. Um, we had to create every part of this. Uh, we had to fly down to Denver and actually work on this in clay. Um, quite a quite a project. Um, very proud of it. Always wanted to do some cement work on the freeway. And um, this was our big chance. And uh, I'm very proud of this. And there's a lot of fun, a lot of work, um, a lot of engineering involved, um, trying to figure out how to get this thing made. Let's see here. There's another pole that was made. It's actually at Providence Hospital. Sorry, there we go. Again, that's my two boys there. Um, this is a Thunderbird on top and um, this, there's a woman there on the bottom. She's got a, a helmet on, it's an eagle helmet. She's got eagles on her blanket there. And uh, there's a glass moon in the middle. I don't know if you guys have seen this at Providence. And speaking of all them Huskies out there, um, this is a Husky dog I created for the football stadium. Um, very, very proud of this. And uh, this is a bronze Husky dog. And, um, you know, they came to me, um, actually Buzz Rodlin um, asked me if I was interested in making something for the football stadium. And I'm like, heck yeah, this is a dream, you know, and I'm a football coach too as well. And uh, so football, Huskies and, you know, art, I mean, it's a dream come true, dream job. So they were making the brand new stadium. They needed this dog done on a certain day and it was very difficult. Um, but this is in the club, uh, the Tai club area. And, um, you know, my kids got to help me uh, work on this. So it was pretty neat, pretty fun for me um, as a dad. And um, there's a W in the fur right here in the, in the middle of, of the dog down the bottom there. So nobody really knows about it. So now you guys know the secret. Even you cougs know the secret now. And let's see here. This piece here is at uh, Cabela's. Um, this is made out of red cedar, made out of uh, fused glass. So it's not stained glass window like uh, what you see at your local church or fire station or whatnot. Um, this is actually all fused together. It's five feet by four feet in the middle. Um, just huge, huge, huge piece of glass. Um, hasn't been done very often that big. There's not very many kilns that are able to fuse this. Um, it's a one shot deal to get this piece made. So basically what I did is I made a stainless glass piece of it and then I made a fuse piece just in case the fuse piece did not work. Um, but I didn't want lines in it, uh, like a stained glass window will have all these lead lines and these black lines going everywhere. Um, I just wanted it to look like a big giant glass painting. Um, and so basically what this is, is a comb. And at the top is a is an orca whale. And um, we, we had these little combs that would groom ourselves and, you know, we would use it to pull the wool out of woolly dog and um, yes I said a woolly dog um, it was a, it's extinct now but it's a dog that's you know in this area that 
lived in this area that we uh, kind of um, herded and just kind of kept them here. Um, and we used it for our clothing and our blankets and, um, and we used, uh, you know, wool for mountain goats. And so we'd use these combs to either groom ourselves or to pull out the wool from these animals. So, and obviously they were very small, uh, as big as your hand. Um, this one is 15 feet tall. And uh, on the bottom is um, some stone uh, basalt. And um, I wanted to put uh, some petroglyphs on the, on the rock down there. So it just wasn't just some basic stone. It actually had some kind of life to it. And um, I tried to draw some petroglyphs um, and I couldn't do it. Um, my drawings were too refined. And so I called my kids in and they were about, I don't know, eight and six years old at the time. And I told them, I pulled up a whale and I said, draw what you see. And they both drew a whale. And then I pulled up a salmon and said, draw exactly what you see. And they drew a salmon and I couldn't, I could not draw how they drew it and they made it look like a petroglyph so I got to use their art on there and I'm very proud of it so they're professional artists before they even knew about being a professional artist so that's pretty I'm pretty proud of this piece so James where's the where's the kiln that you use to get such a large piece um to fuse um so that was used um uh, let's see here. Um, what is that place called? Uh, Covenant Art Glass in Everett. And um, Stan Price was the artist. Um, and they actually moved to uh, Wenatchee. Um, so they sold their business. And they... Uh, yeah, so they, I told him about this project and he's been wanting to get a big giant kiln like that. And I called all the big wig uh, glass companies. None of them wanted to do it. They didn't want to touch it because it was so difficult because it was a one shot deal. And Stan, he just wasn't, you know, he's like, I'll do it. You know, it gives me a reason to buy the kiln. And so, you know, we hired him and he went for it and it turned out just got lucky. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, trying to, um, I don't know what you guys see on the screen because I see me for some reason. You guys. We're still yeah. seeing the Cabela piece. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And James, we're uh, running out of time. So oh, that's fine. That's good. At least, you know, I've got to show up. you some pictures. I appreciate yep. that. So, yeah, sorry about the beginning, but um, yeah, that was, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> so for all your totem poles, where do you get your wood from? Um, well, uh, honestly, there's people that go up to Alaska and whatnot and you know they kind of search out poles and in Canada um, they search out poles um, but when I worked with the tribe it was basically blowdowns in like Darrington and so we just had a deal with them to like if there's a new tree that blew down to give us a call and we would just buy it from them so but it's got to be old growth. It, it can't be, uh, you know, the, the local tree in everybody's yard, you know, because that's second growth, even though it's big at the bottom. Um, usually it's just a bunch of water sitting down there. So it swells right. up the tree. So, yeah, these old growth trees are just hard to find anymore. And they're up in the way up in the mountains. And we don't. We don't chop them down. We just look for blowdowns. So, so it's and then, waste. yeah, and then the ones up in Alaska, they're already cutting everything down, you know. And so there's just people that are picking out the premium log, you know, for whatever. So, 
It's hard to find. So it's, it's, it's really hard. Got to have connections. Never had them in the beginning of my career. Just kind of figured it out and word of mouth kind of thing. Anybody got any questions? Perfect. How, how did you uh, get so diverse as far as wood carving and, and glass work and metal work? Uh, a lot of artists tend to have kind of one direction and yeah. you know, other than um, you know, small items, you're, you're, you look like you specialize in larger items, but a lot of different medias. Yeah, I, um, I think for me, I just got bored um, with just doing one thing. So I get bored just carving. I get bored just doing metal stuff. I just get bored just doing glass stuff. So I just kind of, you know, once I'm doing it too much, I'll jump to something else. Like right now, I'm getting into glass again. Um, and I haven't done it in a long time. And so, you know, I've, I'll have always carve and whatnot. But, you know, I do a lot of metal stuff for a lot of cities. And, uh, you know, it just weathers well and it lasts, you know, forever. And, you know, so, um, you know, it's hard to do the bronze casting, but I did these big bronze casts, you know, for Tulalip and, um, you know, the one I'm working on is 13 and a half feet tall and there's a nine foot tall and a seven foot tall and they're all whale fins, you know, and it's basically like one of my dreams that I've always wanted to accomplish and, you know, so, um, but you know, there's not a lot of opportunity for artists, so um, it's tough, you know. And then, um, you know, and then you got competition and whatnot. So I think for me, I just got into lots of different mediums, and you know, I just kind of liked doing things in different mediums, and then basically put my culture in different mediums. Kind of showed that, you know we're still alive and we're still doing this and, you know, and it just kind of shows, you know, that uh, we're still practicing our culture in different, different mediums, basically. All right. Very good. Thanks James for uh, your presentation today. Uh, Thank you. Anybody?